Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. We've got another review for you today, this time of NIS Classics Volume 2. This review was written for us by Asdin over at Grinning Wolf Games, so thank you very much to you, Asdin. Link to his channel will be in the top in comment. NIS is bringing over a second volume of Classics, this time with Prinny Presents, NIS Classics Volume 2, Make I Kingdom Reclaimed and Rebound, and ZHP Unlosing Ranger vs. Dark Death Evil Man. No, I'm not joking, that is the full title. These games originated on the PlayStation 2 and PSP respectively, but would this collection make a decent addition to your ever-growing Switch collection, or much like its title, is it just a bit of a mouthful? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. This volume has two different tactical role-playing games, each with its own setting, yet both share a similar theme in terms of over-the-top comedy-filled stories. Firstly, we'll look at Makai Knight's story, and in it we see the powerful yet arrogant overlord Zeta, who, after receiving a prophecy on the destruction of his Neverworld, inadvertently fulfills the prophecy himself after a moment of rage and must now rely on the other overlords of the Neverworld to write his world back into existence. The story is set in the same universe as the Disgaea games and shares the same zany characters and humour. The second game in the collection, ZHP Unlosing Ranger vs Dark Death Evil Man, from this moment on in this review, just ZHP, is full of satire and is heavily influenced by the Saturday morning morphine cartoons of a great hero fighting the forces of evil. The world is in danger after Dark Death Evil Man kidnaps the Super Baby, said to be the Earth's saviour, and the absolute victory unlosing Ranger must save the day. However, after he dies by getting run over, the mantle is passed to a random bystander who reluctantly goes off to face Dark Death Evil Man. So in terms of gameplay then, both of these games take place on isometric battlefields with the main characters going back to their hub where they can carry out different functions when not going through missions. Firstly, we'll look at Makai Kingdom and initially you'll be tasked with creating a team using props in the environment, each with their own unique stats. Creating a character out of a rock, for example, will increase their defense stats while possibly hindering their movement range. It's up to the player which classes to have on their team and what armor and weapons they carry into battle. Each character will belong to a class and wield different weapons. After some time, they'll become proficient with them, meaning they can then learn new moves. The hub will eventually grow, offering different services that will aid you in between missions. The main bulk of the game is obviously based around the battles that take place in randomly generated maps. One interesting aspect of the gameplay is that the characters are summoned onto the map through Zeta, whose sole purpose is to manifest his army and buildings onto the battlefield. There is a limit to how many can be on the map, but once summoned, they can move within a certain range or attack. This is very different from the Disgaea games, where your party is bound to traverse through the isometric grid. Characters can only attack once per turn, and can move until their range has been spent. Missions require the player to accumulate a score in order to complete the map, and this is carried out by defeating enemies, finding secrets, and so on. Battling can be a bit confusing at first, even overwhelming to be honest, especially since it is easy to lose your party amongst the enemy troops. I partook in a lot of friendly fire as I clustered many of my troops within the enemy, but I soon realized to take it slow before carrying out attacks. Buildings can also be dropped onto the battlefield and these offer extra buffs as well as refuge for some of your units. The controls can seem a bit awkward at first but soon become easy to grasp. The maps can be fully rotated and the camera can be zoomed in and out, which helps when deciding how to carry out each task. I found the game pretty addictive after a few hours of gameplay, although I did feel that the addition of save features during missions would have helped the pacing as the game only allows for that feature in between battles. Another issue I found was that you were either given the option to watch or skip a cutscene prior to it playing, rather than being able to make this decision during the cutscene should you wish. It's also worth noting that Makai Kingdom does have Peta mode making its debut in the West, and in this mode you play as Zeta's daughter from the future. ZHP is more of a dungeon crawler with roguelite elements. In this game, your character will traverse through the randomly generated floors whilst collecting throwable items, consumables and equipment. An interesting mechanic here is the bonuses gained upon death. If an enemy defeats you, you will gain trauma. Defeating a lot of enemies upon your return to the dungeon will gain you extra points. As you traverse through the dungeon levels, your character will level up. When you are defeated, your character will revert back to level 1, but will keep all of these stat increases. This means that although a dungeon may take many attempts, each time you will become stronger. 
Note that defeat also means losing all of your unsaved items and money. Equipment pieces can be found in these dungeons and sometimes offer special abilities such as the tank treads which allow the player to safely move over spikes. There are also facilities that can be unlocked which will help you bank money, items and even upgrade weapons. Another interesting aspect of the game is the fact that enemies will only move when the character does, similar to games like Crypt of the Necrodancer or Quest of Dungeons. Gameplay is fun if not a little frustrating, especially since dying occurs often. Your character will have a stamina meter which will deplete after some time, and it will do so faster when dual wielding or carrying enemies. If the stamina bar is not refilled by eating, your health will start to deplete instead. The controls here seemed slightly more confusing than in the other game in the collection, simply because the character is moved using the left stick, but when within the dungeons, the character then moves on the grid-based map via the D buttons. The camera doesn't seem to zoom in or out, but can be rotated. All in all, these two games are in essence quite similar as far as the isometric view and base building elements are concerned, but both also offer very different experiences in other ways. I did enjoy Makai Kingdom slightly more, simply because you are tasked with controlling a large group, whereas in ZHP it can feel as if a lot of grinding is required in order to get further ahead. As far as older ports go, they are decent additions to the ever-growing Switch library, and fans of the Disgaea series will get a lot out of this collection. A few quality of life improvements would have been appreciated though, and on the whole, gameplay gets 15 out of 20. Controls tend to be different for both games, meaning that players that jump from one to the other may be thrown off slightly, and whilst they are fine for the most part, they both have their awkward moments, they also get 15 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, it's fair to say that both of these games have some of the best pixel art from their era, and having appeared to have been cleaned up slightly at least for modern consoles, they do the job just right, especially when fitting in with the humour and tone of the games. Personally, I found them more aesthetically pleasing in handheld than in docked, simply because pixelated visuals don't tend to have a great impact on bigger screens, although that is, of course, a personal observation. The font size is fair and the battle animations, as well as the ones found in cutscenes, have a lot of charm. There is a gallery mode where one can check out any of the unlocked still images, and both games are pretty similar visually, although this is not a bad thing as they are bright and colourful and play out as they should. Possibly a more refined camera control would have made the games slightly easier to manoeuvre, but with time it does become second nature. The terrain found in each game is showing its age more than any other aspect, but it is of its time, and I didn't encounter any frame drops, although I did encounter Makai Kingdom giving me an error message when attempting to save the game. Quite possibly the worst time for a game to crash, but luckily it didn't affect my game file in any way. The music and the voice acting is of a high standard on both titles. The script is over the top as expected and the special attacks are accompanied by some bombastic sounds to truly bring them to life. I had no issues with the voice acting in either game but the repetitive commentary of cast members in the ZHP game whenever you picked up an item does get old quite quickly. Visuals do show their age but offer a particular charm because of this and they score 15 out of 20. The soundtrack has great songs which elevate each scenario accordingly, and audio scores 17 out of 20. NIS Classics Volume 2 costs £35.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. The game can be purchased physically and a deluxe edition can also be bought from PlayAsia that has the original soundtrack and an art book included. There are of course two games in this collection, however NIS tends to put a hefty price tag on their software and for me personally I felt this was too much for two ports of old games that have little to no quality of life improvements added. Granted they do have English and Japanese audio as well as the added PETA mode and one could argue that there are possibly hundreds of hours of gameplay within the two titles but they do show their age a little too much for the price being asked in my opinion. Fans of all things Nippon Ichi will probably be happy to have these titles on modern consoles and on the go no less, so factor this into the value score as you see fit, but on the whole for me, value gets 14 out of 20. To conclude, Prinny Present NIS Classics Volume 2, Makai Kingdom Reclaimed and Rebound, ZHP Unlosing Ranger vs Dark Death Evil Man may just take the award for the longest video game title in history, bloody hell you're not joking there, but it also brings two more games from Nippon Itchy's back catalogue to a new audience. 
Whilst only including two games, they do offer quite different experiences in some respects, whilst being full of the similar humour and musical beats of games from this developer. To be fair, it's not being promoted as a remaster or a remake, they are just straight up ports of two good games, but I do feel that even with this, a few quality of life improvements wouldn't have gone amiss, just to streamline things a tad in terms of save states, etc. Either way though, it's an enjoyable experience whether you want to play as a demonic overlord or a reluctant hero. NIS Classics Volume 2 gets a switch up score of 76%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Another big thank you to Asdin for writing this one for us, please do check out his channel, link is in the top pinned comment. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care and until next time, happy gaming.